Jackie Kennedy was procured by the CIA to shoot JFK in the throat in 1963, as per another Stunner report. For a considerable length of time, different paranoid ideas have circled about who truly killed JFK with most autonomous agents concurring that Lee Harvey Oswald was an honest patsy reprimanded for the death so as to secure the genuine executioner's personality. The Warren Commission was set up to research the death yet left such a significant number of inquiries unanswered that numerous agents still trust the commission was built up to conceal reality about what truly happened. Dailymail.co.uk reports, in the official report, it's said that Oswald, who was shot dead two days after the fact by dance club proprietor Jack Ruby, discharged at the presidential limo twice, expert marksman style, from the sixth floor of the Texas Book Depository, one shot missing the auto and the other killing the president and harming Governor John Connolly, who was likewise in the open-top auto as it traveled down Dealey Plaza on November 22, 1963. Be that as it may, for a few, the certainty simply don't make any sense. Dr. James Fetzer, creator of Murder in Dealey Plaza, proposes the professional killer was certainly not Oswald. He says, as indicated by the Warren report, Lee Oswald scored two hits, discharging three shots in six seconds. With a medium to low speed weapon, which couldn't have perpetrated the harm to the president's skull. Gifted ace marksman attempted to reproduce the situation however fizzled. What the report asserted Oswald accomplished was really inconceivable. Is Dr. Fetsa proposing that Kennedy will probably have been shot at short proximity, shot by the individual sitting by him in the auto that day maybe? Despite the fact that Fetzer's hypothesis, while giving occasion to feel qualms about the official variant, does not point the finger straightforwardly at Kennedy's significant other, some trust it was Jackie who was behind the deadly shot. The Warren Commission expresses that two shots were discharged from behind, yet Kennedy's wounds it is asserted indicated he was shot from the front, with the projectile making an exit at the back of his skull. Fetzer says, the examination X-beams were manufactured to disguise a huge victory to the back of the head, caused by a shot discharged from in front. The post-mortem record was distorted. Indeed, more than 40 witnesses portrayed the lethal damage as a vast injury, the measure of a baseball, at the back of the president's head, yet the post-mortem photographs demonstrated no such twisted, only a little round gap at the back of his neck. Columnist and smash hit creator Dr. Jim Mars, who kicked the bucket not long ago, has expounded on the JFK intrigue in his book Crossfire, which was utilized as a hotspot for Oliver Stone's film JFK. He concurs with Dr. Fetzer that Kennedy was shot from the front, not the back. In spite of these rehashed claims, the media have reliably marked anybody doubting the official story as a screwball. To recommend that the much-adored First Lady was in charge of such a shocking demonstration would be something even the most solidified scheme scholar would experience difficulty getting to grasps with. In any case, the Warren Commission would not falter, it proved unable. On the off chance that it concurred that JFK was shot from the front, it would need to concede that there was more than one professional killer, one who shot the president from the front. For anybody keen on the story first stop for confirmation would be the now popular Zapruder film. Dallas dressmaker Abraham Zapruder was said to be an onlooker on Dealey Plaza, recording the motorcade as it cruised by. The film, seized instantly after the death and not appeared to the general population until 1975, has now been seen by millions around the world. For a considerable length of time, General society trusted that the film demonstrated the occasions of those troubling couple of minutes as unedited, constant proof. In any case, some of those who've since examined the stunning film intently have asserted that, has the film been altered, as well as that First Lady Jackie carries on in a most curious manner. In the film, the watcher can see the limo skimming along the court. As the motorcade approaches, John Kennedy is by all accounts in some sort of pain as though he might experience difficulty relaxing. Spouse Jackie pushes ahead in her seat and turns 90 degrees to confront her significant other. Trick scholars at that point portray how she at that point inclines in towards him, apparently raising her left hand towards his throat. 
All of a sudden, a glimmer of orange, the split of a shot and Kennedy droops advances and to the other side. By then, rather than dodging down and hiding as one may in such a circumstance, Jackie bows up on the seat and climb over the back of the auto, and the connivance scholars guarantee, something can seem blazing in her left hand. A guardian, Clint Hill, inclines forward, before Jackie does an awkward slither in reverse into her seat. The most prominent account used to clarify her developments is that, in a condition of stun, she was wildly attempting to recover some of her better half's mind and skull. A great many people appear to be cheerful to become tied up with that clarification. Be that as it may, is this what was truly happening? Numerous connivance scholars think not. There's one YouTube video which considers Jackie may have been the executioner, yet this film is a homemade narrative, described by a man with a scruffy facial hair and wearing a t-shirt, a look which causes numerous watchers not to consider him as important as they would a man in a suit. Check the description to see the entire video.